Hi everyone. We are often startled, amazed, perhaps astounded at the number of royals, kings, queens, uh, princes, princesses, and many others that are enrolled in the great catalog of the saints of the Holy Orthodox Church. After all, in our own experience here in America, the idea of someone being so utterly Christian that they would lay down everything for the sake of Christ, including all the power and privilege that they had attained, well, it just amazes us. We can't even comprehend such a thing in this country. Yet the Orthodox Church is full of these such examples and highly venerates many, many of these saints. Because after all, someone who literally is at the top of the world in terms of the things that they have and the power that they have, to give it all up for nothing, to just discard it all for nothing, but yet it's not for nothing. It's for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, of course, is everything. And many of these rulers knew that and acted accordingly. Well, today we celebrate on August 28th one of the great Georgian queens who did something very similar to what I've just described. Her name is Shushanik, and she was queen of Georgia. But even though she had apparently a relatively happy marriage, four children, yet politics and the idea of getting along with one's neighbor in another country seemed to thwart any ideas of a Christian family for a Saint Shushanik and instead caused her great pain and distress because her husband, King Varznik, is someone who was having trouble with the neighboring Persians at the time, and he was seeking desperately to find an accord with them in order to get along more peacefully. Well, in this case, getting along peacefully meant that he had to go to them, give up his Christianity, basically become a worshiper of fire, and deny everything that St. Shushanik had worked so hard to instill in her family. When she heard about what had happened, when her husband was on his way home from this accord, she said that she would simply not see him again, that she would never be with someone who could just completely deny our Lord Jesus Christ. Even her spiritual father who came to her said, look, this is going to be very problematic for you. Uh, this man is going to cause you a lot of grief. Are you willing to go down this road? And she said, absolutely, I am. I want nothing to do with him. Well, he finally did come back. And she would not go to the palace to see him. She left the palace and hid herself away. And finally, he sent his brother, and Shushanik's sister-in-law to come and find her and beg her to come back to the palace. And she continued to refuse, but ultimately she said, okay, I will come back, I will come back with you. And so Varznik invited all of them to a dinner one night. And yet Shushanik was very hesitant at the dinner. He wanted nothing to do with her husband. She wanted nothing to do with him. And because of this, he was quite distressed. And yet she said, look, I don't care what it costs me, what harm comes to me. The fact that you have denied Christ, the fact that you have turned your back on your creator, as she says, means that I can have nothing to do with you ever again. Well, Varznik was quite angry at this, and he ended up beating St. Shushanik mercilessly. And then he took her and he threw her into a prison, waiting for her to give way. And yet, for six years in that prison, she would not give in. In fact, her spirituality attained such a high degree that her prayers cured many people. And it said that those who were childless were all of a sudden able to conceive children. And so finally, at the time of her repose, she asked to be buried right at the spot where her husband 
had thrown her out of the palace and indeed that is what happened. About 150 years later the Catholicos of Georgia at that time uh, unearthed her relics which were a site of great veneration for all and brought them to the Church of the Most Holy Theotokos in Tbilisi where they lie to this day. So we see that even the great things of this world and all the conveniences and power that they bring ultimately are to be counted as but dust when considering that it would cost you the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. She knew this. She understood this well and that which her parents had instilled in her lasted her to the end of her days and now why her husband is considered but a forgotten apostate, she, in fact, reigns among the saints in the Holy Church of Georgia and indeed the Orthodox Church throughout the world. Bye-bye.